हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द वेरी फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ एम थर्ड सेमेस्टर पेपर टेन ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी ब्रिटिश पोइट्री नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द यूनिट वन दैट इज फ्रॉम द मॉडर्न टू द पोस्ट मॉडर्न इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द यूनिट वन दैट इज द क्राइसिस ऑफ एम्पायर एंड डी कॉलोनाइजेशन in this part we will cover 19th century imperialism benefits of industrialization significant changes in the lifestyle of people successful revolutionary struggles managing imperial administration important episodes leading to decolonization emergence of new political powers in europe the crisis of the empire and decolonization did not happen overnight it has started showing slow but definite signs of collapse by the early decades of the 20th century 19th century imperialism was characterized by the exploitation of racial inequality economic subjugation and a tacit anti-native bias for more than a century the colonies had served as important sources for the generation and supply of raw materials and then markets for the finished goods manufactured in england the colonies were competing with the mother country for opportunities which were now available to many enterprising english people The imperialist enterprise also brought about a significant change in the lifestyle of the natives. The benefits of industrialization slowly filtered to the colonized people. Education, sanitation, medicine, transport and communication being some of the major field affected by this process. Education and enlightenment brought with it an awareness of the ideals of liberty, equality and the right to self-determination. The idea of self-determination was initially associated with the process of decolonization, but its germ lies in the upsurge of nationalism in many of the colonies, which intensified towards the end of the 19th century. the nationalistic spirit was manifested in the recognition of one's cultural identity which made it difficult to accept the foreign rule mohandas karamchand gandhi and aurobindo are two striking examples of how the western model of education and experience of european life contributed to the nationalistic spirit in colonies like india armed with the knowledge of benefits of liberty the nationalistic leaders in many of the colonies staked a serious claim for freedom equality and an end to foreign domination the knowledge of successful revolutionary struggles especially those in america and france and later russia inspired the freedom fighters in the colonies the matter gained strength with the international scene as the logic and ideology behind the allies involvement was that these wars were fought for the sake of freedom and liberty of the oppressed peoples as the 19th century passed on the cost of managing the imperial administration started to make an impact on the colonizers attitude What was initially a very beneficial enterprise and a mode of profit was now becoming burdensome. A deliberate shift in policy can be seen in the formation of the League of Nations in 1919 when the creation of the mandate system made the image change over necessary.
South African Boer conflict was one of the important episodes that contributed to the intensified crisis and eventually collapse of the British Empire. Boer conflict led by the commander in chief General Buller who lost at the hands of native africaners on January 24 1900 in South Africa it was a major embarrassment for the britishers this conflict tarnished the image of imperialist it also exposed ill motives of the british rule among colonies The Easter Uprising of 1916 showed how the imperialist British could go against its own white brethren, a fact noted by other European countries during the middle of the First World War. The rebellion was short and lasted for only four days, while 16 of its leaders were captured and executed. 450 of the rebels died, with the casualties numbering about 100 on the British side. Amritsar massacre of 1919 presented the British in an unprecedented brutal way to the world. The unprovoked firing upon peaceful demonstrators in Jallianwala Bagh, Amritsar on April 13, 1919 left almost 400 dead and 1000 wounded. The outrage over the incident in India and elsewhere sparked off a serious rethinking of the attitude towards the British. it contributed to the consolidation of the satyagraha movement in india and is often taken as an example of the frustration with which the british administration was coping the easter uprising of 1916 and the amritsar massacre of 1919 were strong indicators of the growing resistance in the colonial territories a condition the british was finding extremely difficult to negotiate with the another development closely associated with the gradual crisis of british imperialism in the 20th century was the loss of singapore in february 1942 the british forces surrendered meekly to the japanese this loss of singapore along with the subsequent capture of the 130000 imperial troops including australian and kiwi troops was seen as a serious blow to the idea of european invincibility india's independence from the british in 1947 was the most obvious sign that the massive imperial structure at the center of which it stood was irreversibly dismantling itself the labor policy makers at the helm believed that while managing india had been both a costly and messy business the other southeast asian and african colonies would continue to serve english interest well such a belief however was ill founded british tact and diplomacy in the 1950s failed to prevent the independence movements in the african states from realizing their goals The lack of approval for British governance in Ghana and Kenya contributed to the decline of empire. And events such as the Mau Mau rebellion in the later country only added to the loss. Atrocity was now a commonly associated qualification for the British style of governance as the experience of the Boer and the mau mau only served to enhance and magnify this image of hostility among the colonized the five most significant factors responsible for decolonization are enhanced financial and military liability in the post war period the emergence of the united states as a major power in international politics which consequently changed the relations between the western nations organized resistance movements in the colonies and the increased demand for self determination opinion favoring the granting of independence to the colonies in britain and the last is the united nations declaration on decolonization 1960 and american endorsement of it
एट द सेम टाइम फाइव फर्दर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ डी कॉलोनाइजेशन कुड बी लिस्टेड टू एक्सप्लेन दी फेनोमेना फर्स्टली द ग्रोथ ऑफ नेशनलिज्म इन मैनी ऑफ द कॉलोनीज कुड नो लॉन्गर बी इग्नोर्ड द सेकेंड कंडीशन एसोसिएटेड विद डी कॉलोनाइजेशन इज द सडननेस विद विच इट हैपन even a century prior to india's independence for example the nationalist movement had failed to consolidate it into a worthwhile body while by the beginning of the 20th century the resistance found its voice and fervor the third aspect about decolonization is its unpredictability and indeterminacy it is impossible to suggest a formula to effectively explain the time scale involved in decolonization fourthly not all colonies achieved independence through the same method it implies that different local factors along with the nature of the colonizer and colonized relation contributed to the variety of situations which were not in imitation of each other in the colonies finally decolonization has hardly been a smooth affair in many colonies the violent aftermath suggested that things were not easy even during the departure of the british thus there have been various explanations regarding the decline of the british empire eric hobbs bomb holds the view regarding the british attitude towards decolonization the british accepted because ultimately they understood that there are limits on what can be achieved in the world equally they never attempted to establish a form of supremacy with europe this is all about the first part of the unit 1 thank you